Welcome to another episode of Outside the Echo Chamber, coming to you from inside the state capitol as the 2024 legislative session rolls on. Today is AARP Day here in the capitol, and I know a lot of people know what AARP is. They, they might have cursory knowledge of what AARP does, but maybe a lot of people don't know exactly how they do it and how they become part of these communities. And so to that end, joining me today is the state director, Galen Miller. We want to thank you for your time today, and I'll let you go into a little bit about what AARP does. You might notice a young strapping gentleman at the end who's nowhere near 50 years old. Well, what is he doing here talking about AARP? Closer than you think. Well, he's Evan Osborne. He's the, the executive director of the Capital Market, and he will be here to talk about some of these types of relationships that you guys are forming in the communities to show that AARP is not just an advocate for the community, but actually a part of the community and really woven into the fabric of it. So Gaylene, I just want to start with you off the top because uh, I know that you're here today to help push the, the agenda of what you hope to get done here in the legislative body. Talk a little bit about what you hope to see come out of this before they gavel out in a few weeks here. Well, first, Rick, thanks for having me on. So appreciate that sure. and the time. Um, and I want to let your viewers know that AARP advocates on behalf of uh, 50 plus West Virginians every day during the legislative session. Um, but as you say, we're also part of the community and we're proud to be part of the Charleston and West Virginia community. Um, so this year we have what we're calling our fraud package. So we're working on some legislation that would um, related to gift card scams, right. uh, something around what we call the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, which we're calling the robocall bill because nobody likes robocalls that I've knows talked what to. Robocalls are. <laughs> yes. And then there's also a unfair service agreement which relates to real estate and selling of your home. Okay. Um, then we also have a restitution bill for securities violations. So that's our fraud package and I can go into more of that when you want me to. Sure. I but, mean that's why we're here because I, uh, fraud is such a huge issue. And, and, and these scammers are evolving and they're, they're oh. ahead of the curve with technology and knowing how to get in there. And, and you know, it's a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I, I kind of know what's going on. I, I would be able to see it, but they're so ahead of, of everything that, the that's The bad happening. guys are really good at what they exactly. do. Exactly. So it's important to know and be right. able to stay ahead right. of them. And so with the gift cards and, you know, everybody knows that, you know, you get a call from a friend or your boss or somebody says, hey, I'm kind of tied up. Can you go buy, you know, $500 worth of gift cards for me, I'll pay you back. Yeah. That's a red flag. Yeah, and know? these people have done their research. They know oh, who your yeah. friends are, they know names to drop. Absolutely. Um, or it's a utility company calling saying, your bill's overdue, you need to go buy gift cards to pay your utility bill or we're going to turn it off. Right. Um, or it could be the IRS calling and saying, you owe taxes and go buy a gift card and pay it. What people need to be mindful of is gift cards are presents, not payments. Right. And so that's, a, again, what we want to do with this legislation is, is just put up some signage, you know, for folks to go, hey, if you feel under duress to buy these gift cards, stop, pump the brakes, take a breath. Um, and so that, that, I think, is really important. Um, with the Telephone Consumer Protection Act, it's not going to eliminate robocalls, um, but it's building on what the federal law did, and that is restrict when the calls can come, restrict how many times they can call you, things like that, just to put some guardrails on those robocalls. Um, and so I think that's really important. Our number one priority though, Rick, by far and away, something that I, we hear from our members all the time is about paying tax on Social Security. You paid tax on it when you were working. It's your money. You've earned it. It was never intended to fund state government. Right. And it does seem like double taxation. It absolutely is. There's no way around it. Um, so, a again, we hear from our members all the time. Uh, we did an unscientific survey with our, or, excuse me, questionnaire with our members. 90% um, of the people who took that questionnaire said that would be the number one issue they want us to work on. And at the, one of the very first shows we did when the session began was with leadership in both the House and the Senate, and, and they brought that up, that that, that, that was something, a key piece of legislation that they wanted to work on. So hopefully you're getting those, what we've heard from the, the gears going. What we've heard from most House members is they would like to see it fully eliminated. Um, the leadership is taking a little more of a conservative approach. Yeah, there's always prudent, number crunching involved. A, a prudent approach, in our opinion, and that's they're, they're going to phase it out over three years. Um, so once, that should be on first reading today, actually, in the House. Uh, Thursday would be passage if, right. if, if everything if everything happens the way it should. 
Um, and then it'll go to the Senate, and we're going to turn our attention completely to the Senate. Talk a little bit about the uh, Community Challenge Grant Program that you guys have, because that's a big part of what you do, and it's probably something that people don't really understand or, or know that it even exists. Right. So um, AARP Nationwide has issued a uh, call for Community Challenge Grants applications. Uh, in West Virginia, last year alone, we funded five grants um, to do things like parks and outdoor spaces, um, soft trails at New River Gorge that's great for people with young children or people who might be a little older and have some mobility challenges. Right. Um, some community gardens, which is really nice, just over in South Charleston at Heart and Hand, they're working with Cafe Appalachia on a community garden. Um, so the application process is open now. You can find out all about it at our website, which is aarpwb.org. Um, and it's open until March 6th. So we uh, look forward to seeing all of those applications. And uh, we don't make the final decision here sure. at the state level, but we do make recommendations. And I'm proud to say that so far, they've taken our recommendations. And the good thing about Google is you don't even need that whole website. You just type in AARP, and you guys have done such a good job with SEO and, and search optimization that as soon as you type in AARP, the web, I mean, well, it you've comes done up. your research, Rick. Up. I appreciate <laughs> that. All you need to know is AARP, and you there can you find go. where you need to go. Good. And I'm glad that you brought up stuff like community gardens because that segues perfectly into what we wanted to talk about with Evan in the capital yeah. market. Um, you guys have forged this relationship that we were uh, honored to be a part of last year as well. With uh, the, we have. Don't know that I don't know if you're living under a rock. But we have a <laughs> local celebrity chef who's done a show out at the Capital Market, Chef Paul Smith, who does a wonderful job and uh, he's, he's natural at it. And, uh, just talk a little bit about the partnership, Evan, with AARP and, and how excited you guys were to get on board and, and what it's been able to do not only for the Capital Market, not only for AARP, but also for consumers and people in the community. Hey, so on the whole, we're just tremendously grateful for this relationship with AARP. As somebody that's not quite at retirement age, but has made a conscious decision to raise a family and hopefully one day retire in West Virginia, um, I have a vested interest in the work that they're doing now. And I think a lot of people sometimes take that for granted. But, you know, long term, looking ahead, they're just making West Virginia a better place. So um, I, I appreciate that not only does this relationship benefit capital market, but it benefits me as an individual. And I think sometimes, you know, when you're looking at the broader context of all it is, all the stuff going on in this legislative session, um, there are real world and practical implications for, for all the time and effort that they're putting into that. And then um, just from a professional standpoint, our relationship with the capital market has, no pun intended, really blossomed over the, the, the past several years. And we're just tremendously grateful, not only for the monetary support that AARP provides, but the, the show of getting out the community and coming to see the things that we have to offer at the market. And Let's Get Cooking with Chef Paul is really the, the nexus of all of that coming together. You know, Not only are we a retail establishment, a farmer's market, but we're also that third place. We're not home, we're not work, but we're where the community comes together. And I think that it's so, I look forward to the Let's Get Cooking classes every oh, day yeah. of the month because I know it's going to be not only a chance to interact with Chef Paul and learn how to make some just world-class food, but it's a chance to see so many faces that I'd see once a month come show not only their support for Chef Paul and what it is that he's doing, but learn more about AARP. And I think that um, you know, not only are we educating the consumer on how to prepare these really incredible meals using seasonal fresh ingredients at the market, but it's an opportunity for AARP to help educate, you know, their constituents and learn things like about how not to be scammed and, you know, fraud detection and things like that. So it, it, it touches on all of these different things that we try to do. And what's nice about it is that it's a win-win that kind of just happened organically and because it's... West Virginia as a whole has a large 50 plus population. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's probably just a numbers game anyway, but the demographic is perfect for what, what you guys are doing out there. I, you know, we were at every show as well, a little plug for us too, you can watch it on HTV and <laughs> download the app today. But, you know, that's your demo too. Yeah, absolutely. The, those are the people that are coming out. And, you know, my mother who moved out here from Arizona to be with her grandkids last year, she loved, she went to every show once once she knew what was going on and she said, oh, I, oh, I didn't even know that you can make something like that so easily. You know, and that, we, these are people that, that want to learn that and, and come out and then it gives you a chance to showcase everything at the capital market. It gives you a chance to showcase what you can do for those people. It, it, it seems perfect. And I mean, um, 
where else can you have a James Beard finalist come right. give you cooking lessons for free on a monthly basis? In your community. I mean, you, yeah. you think uh, of what we're able to offer here in Charleston, West Virginia. And there is nowhere that, that, that you can do that. And I, I think we're not only, uh, you, you know, so grateful for Chef Paul's time, but as, as he evolves in his professional career, the fact that he has chosen to remain a partner with this is, is just really, really incredible. I think it, 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 it you know, really shows how valued everyone finds this relationship. And, and we're just beyond grateful every month, starting in May. That's uh, right. It'll be the third every Thursday, Thursday of every third month, Thursday going every through month. September. Uh, we'll be able to offer this again. And, and each year, it, it's, it's just grown by leaps and bounds. We had to buy new chairs this year <laughs> to accommodate the size of the crowd. And yeah, you might need to expand the market. I, I, you know, I, <laughs> Everything's great, on the table. That's a great problem to have. Exactly. Right. So, Gaylene, it is AARP Day today is, at yes. the Capitol. So, specifically, is there something that you that you want to get done today while you're here talking to these legislators, other than just pushing the agenda? Well, you know, again, it, it's an awareness. Um, so, we have a resolution that's going to be offered in the Senate, uh, recognizing AARP and specifically our volunteer advocacy team. We have volunteers from all across the state that come to Charleston lend their time, their expertise, their experience uh, on behalf of older West Virginians and our agenda. And so that, that I think, makes us very powerful. I, I think you know, Rick, we don't endorse candidates. Right. We don't contribute. Nonpartisan. nonpartisan. I, I believe it's the largest nonpartisan nonprofit in the country. You're taking AARP. my talking point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just showing that I've done no, my research. You have. Absolutely. <laughs> You're exactly right. We are the largest nonpartisan uh, nonprofit membership group for people over the age of 50. And by the way, Evan, you don't have to be 50 to join. Ah, bonus. You can join Port at sale. any Done. age. <laughs> you can join at any age. You're just not eligible for some of those age-related products. So you wouldn't be eligible for a Medicare supplement, for that's example. Right. <laughs> and that's <laughs> And that's another, I know that's more of a federal thing, but yeah. we could touch on that too. Is you know a lot of the seniors that might be watching are worried about Medicare and what's happening there, and then slicing budgets and, and prescription drug prices. Oh, I'm sure gosh, that that's something yes. that you guys concentrate on as well as much as you can. Oh, absolutely, uh, both at the state and federal level. Right. You know, we were pleased to see the Inflation Reduction Act pass because of what it did to improve Medicare and the, and limiting the cost of prescription drugs. You know, last year here at the state house. Our legislature took a great step in limiting the cap on insulin copays right. to $35 in the aggregate. And that means, and I learned a lot about folks who have diabetes, I, I don't have it, but most diabetics take more than one insulin product. Sure. And so in the aggregate means they pay $35, period. Yes. Um, and so that was, a, that was a big deal. West Virginia was the first state to do that. All right, well, we talked about Chef Paul Smith. He's, he's giving us oh, the side Chuck. eye. Over. He's actually here today, so we're going to bring him on. Okay. Talk to him a little bit about his show and what awesome. he looks forward to it and his partnership with, with the Capital Market and Absolutely. AARP. And, and I have to say, as my last word, the Capital Market is a gem sure. in our capital city. And Evan's done a wonderful job. He's, sure. he's a rock star. All right, well, stay put because we'll be back with Chef Paul Smith right after this on Outside the Echo Chamber. All right. Are you ready to unlock a future filled with remarkable pay, unbeatable benefits, and unparalleled satisfaction? Imagine embarking on a journey that offers you a college-level education without the weight of debt, all while earning a steady income. Look no further than the West Virginia Building and Construction Trades Apprenticeship Programs. Join us, and together, let's build a future that's brighter and stronger. Go to ACTWV.org to apply today. The West Virginia Building and Construction Trades, where the future is... At CAMC, our focus has always been on building better health care for you. Our new Center for Learning and Research combines cutting-edge technology with hands-on experience for physicians, nurses, and other caregivers. Using specially designed simulation rooms and robotics with expert instruction, our learners expand their expertise. Because you deserve the most advanced care possible now and in the years to come. Welcome to the future of medicine. Fair warning, if you go after our kids and young people, I'm coming after you. As governor, I'll see to it that fentanyl dealers get a mandatory life sentence, and I'll put human traffickers behind bars for life. To help our communities hire and retain the best first responders, I'll increase pay and benefits. 
and will provide better training for our police and our firefighters and our EMS, the ones who put their lives on the line to protect ours. Welcome back inside the state capitol as we continue this episode of Outside the Echo Chamber. And we are honored to be joined now by the Charleston Gazette Mail West Virginian of the Year. Wow. Thank you. Thanks for having Chef me. Chef Paul Smith, talk a little bit about, we were, you know, we were just going over the, the partnership with the AARP and the capital market and what we've been able to do and what you've been able to do. Um, as, as a local chef, I know that sometimes you can't see the forest for the trees when it's your life. You're living this every sure. day. But my goodness, a, a Beard Award finalist in Charleston, West Virginia. Have you ever been able to kind of take that macro vision of, of what you've accomplished and how far you've come? And if anybody that hasn't read that article, <laughs> by the way, what an amazing look at your life and, and just the, the, the Thank journey you. that you've gone through. Um, Thank you. What's it like being Chef Paul Smith? Uh, busy. <laughs> no, it is, it's an honor. Thank, first of all, thank you for having me. Um, and thanks to ARP. I mean, they really help me and the market as a partner. You know, as far as the James Beard Award, you know, two times in a row, first finalist. Did I ever think that would happen? Absolutely not. You know, you think about wildest dreams. That was not even in my wildest dreams. Right. But it's great to come home and to represent West Virginia, Charleston, all, I look at it as all, the, all of our team, all of our restaurants, all of the restaurants in West Virginia. I have reached out and been reached out to by so many people saying, we got your back, this is fantastic. You know, we're really trying to be the water in this rising tide and trying to raise it just a little bit uh, and, and hopefully people are following and we're following others. You know, it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Now, you, you do a show every summer, it's a summer series, the third Thursday of every month, May through September. Uh, we were a part of it last year, honored, and hopefully we will be again this year. Uh, you do that at the Capital Market. Talk a little bit about maybe, and you can both uh, chime in on this, how that partnership developed, the, the genesis of it, and, and where you hope to take it from here. So, Paul was involved long before I, I was the director, but I think, um, you know, we've been fortunate to really hitch our wagon to his stars it's just kind of shot into the stratosphere but um the the time leading up to like let's get cooking really doesn't happen in a vacuum um it usually starts several weeks out with us having a phone call talking about what's coming into the market what's there um because you know he lives and breathes this local food identity and it all kind of coalesces around what is the best way that we can highlight these incredible products grown by West Virginia farmers? How can we use ingredients that are, you know, cultivated right here, either at JQ Dickinson Salt or Angelo's Sausage? You know, we have these world-class producers. And so every month, it's the best problem to have. It's like, how do we <laughs> yeah. come up with something that is, you know, not only accessible, we want thing, you know, we don't, we want, our attendees to leave and go home and make it and recreate it and put their right. own spin on it. So it, it starts yeah. a couple weeks out and we develop, you know, a, a loose idea. And then he, you know, in that big, beautiful brain of his <laughs> makes the magic happen. And then kind of, you know, and, and, it, yeah. and, it, and it's always fun because we kind of sort of know how it's going to come together every week. And then magically it's, you know, we're, we're putting out a, a a great menu for a hundred plus attendees. And that's, that's what's great about it is because it's not only a showcase of West Virginia and almost a history lesson as you start going, you know, you're using JQ Dickinson salt. Yeah. You can talk about that history, right. but, but you, you allow the food to be the star, which is saying something right. from a celebrity chef standpoint, because as someone that's watched this kind of whole genre progress from back in the day when it was just Julia Child, Wolfgang, yeah. Doug, you know, now that you've segmented all these food networks, you know, there's 25 networks out there that's blown up from the Bobby Flays to the, the Guy Fieri's. It just seems like these guys are getting louder and louder and more bombastic, but you just, yeah. you just have, you know, you let the food talk for itself, Absolutely. but you bring that personality to it. It's, it's a tough little puzzle to, to yeah. put together, but you do a wonderful job at it. Well, thanks, and really that's what it's about. It's about showcasing the talented people and farmers and producers and local that we have from the capital. And the capital market is a feather in a cap that I've been lucky enough to travel all over the country and there aren't many capital markets. You know, it is a, it's really fantastic. And I don't think a lot of people know that it is a nonprofit. So we have to support it. And that's why it's so important to me 
to be a part of this. And we've been doing it now for about 10 years. We've gone from 20 people, and like Evan said, there's 100 people that come on a Thursday to watch us do our thing. And it's absolutely fantastic. You're right, from the JQ Dickinson's to the Angelo Sausage, to the Grits Farms, you know, it. We have so much here in Appalachia that is right at the fingertips. I got the easy job. Just cook it and <laughs> yeah. have a good time with it because that's what I do on a daily basis is have a good time, respect the ingredients, respect the, the people that are around me, and try to create an experience based off of food. Well, growth presents challenges, especially when you're, when you're working with a, with a budget and, and trying to be, in, you know, with, with nonprofits right. like AARP. So, you know, yeah. you guys are wonderful at what you do. So, Thank you. hopefully, continued success. And again, May through September, the third Thursday of every month, yes, at the Capital Market, and hopefully, be able to watch it on the HD Media Plus app. Download it today. And who knows? Maybe good. another James Beard watch party. In the hey, that, there well, you and go. that was super cool. Who knew? that right. 500 people would come together to watch that and have, and that's the great thing because literally this takes a village from the market nice. to AARP, to the team, to the community, and I live in the best village that we have. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, and you do a wonderful job. Thanks. Chef Paul Smith, thanks for your thanks. time. And don't go anywhere because coming up, we'll have Delegate Eric Householder on set to talk about some of the legislation that they're working on with AARP when Outside the Echo Chamber continues. At Dutch Miller Automotive, we've grown quite a bit over the last 60 years but our core principles remain the same. We believe in treating our customers and our team members like friends and family, and we see it as our obligation to give back to all the communities we are so fortunate to do business in. In just West Virginia alone, we've grown from one location on the west end of Huntington to 10 rooftops employing more than 500 mountaineers. Check out the inventory from all of our stores at DutchMillerAuto.com. Dutch Miller Automotive Group, West Virginia proud. When it comes to surgical care, you want the best hands behind the robot. And those are ours. Choose Mon Health. Feel the difference. J.B. McCuskey is a lifelong West Virginian who has proudly served the state of West Virginia for years. He's running for Attorney General to keep fighting for our West Virginian values. Vote J.B. McCuskey for Attorney General on May 14th. Welcome back inside the state capitol as we continue this episode of Outside the Echo Chamber. And joining me now is Delegate Eric Householder who to speak a little bit about the legislation that's going on. We talked with Gaylene Miller from AARP earlier about their agenda and what they're hoping to get passed. And I know that she said one of the big bills that she was keeping her eye on is the fraud victims bill. If you could just talk a little bit about the status of that bill, and I believe it's in finance right now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Rick. Uh, and good morning. And yes, uh, AARP's one of their monumental pieces of legislation besides the elimination of the Social Security tax or the elimination of the personal income tax on Social Security right. is the Victims Restitution Fund. It is a bill that we tried to run last year, AARP tried to run last year. It did stall out in both houses. This year it is in finance, and I'm hopeful that we can get it across the finish line. So what does the bill do? The bill sets up, right now, it basically sets up a fund, but it, there's no money in this fund. It just sets up the mechanism to allow the auditor's office to possibly put money into this fund if there's been a crime or a, or a victim has suffered any restitution issues like been scammed. Or, so before you go in, yeah. so how would that be budgeted? Where's that money come from? Well, that money would come out of the auditor's office, okay. or it, or it could be legislative appropriated. Okay. So, but right now, the all the bill simply does Just putting up the mechanism. It's that's right. It sets up a mechanism. It sets up a special revenue fund, and it does not fund it. Okay. So. And so, what, what's the holdup in finance? You think? Uh, I think some people are concerned about what is the role of government, you know, uh, where do we stop? If you set up this fund and uh, to assist these victims, how much money do you put in? Uh, where does it stop? And I think there's some concerns. I'm hoping that maybe I can quell some of those concerns and uh, we can see with past data and, and maybe there, there are caps in the bill up to a certain percentage. So maybe we can get the bill moving and go from there. It would seem like a, a tough issue to to run a bill on in that it's such a multifaceted problem. You know, on the front end, 
it, it starts with education and, yes. and, and you know explaining to people because these these scammers are evolving and they're always ahead they of the curve. Yeah. So it, it's a tough sell to, to, to get everyone on board with. Here's what you need to look out for because right. you can't see around corners sometimes. Yeah, and a lot of these uh, a lot of these uh, it's it's basically going after those who are regulating securities. And I will say that probably every everybody in West Virginia who are selling securities are doing the right thing. It's the scammers that are in Philippines or Nigeria or other places. It does give the auditor's office teeth to go after them, but how would you go after someone in the Philippines? Or not? You, you probably would Especially never. a lot of it's online, they're, they're encrypted, it's tough. Right, yeah. yeah, you'd never find them. So that's some of the concerns, but uh, unfortunately some of our seniors are getting scammed daily, and it, it's very unfortunate. Do you think that there's some type of compromise or some type of tweak to the language that can be done to get it through finance and to get this thing moving? Maybe if the caps were put in place, like uh, there are caps, but maybe if it said you could only spend X amount of dollars per year. But once again, how do you regulate that? Is it first come, first serve? You know, I, you'd hate to see some senior be scammed of their life savings of 500000 or 200000 and they and we only had enough money for the first three people that came you know, I mean, so how, how would you police it? Judging by your demeanor, you don't seem very confident that this is going to go anywhere. It's a heavy lift, but I'm, I'm hopeful. So I'm trying to work through with uh, Vernon Christ, uh, the sure. chairman of finance, sure. and see what we can do to maybe help it along. The other bill that Galen brought up that I know is uh, big on the agenda is the elimination of the personal tax on Social Security. Right. And their, their stance is when you were paying into the system, you were right. already getting taxed on that money. So it's almost like you're double like you're getting double taxed. Right. Do you think that that might have some more traction? Oh, absolutely. I mean, four years ago, the governor came out with a proposal. We did eliminate the personal income tax on Social Security. For those who are married couples, 100000 or less. For singles, 50000 or less. This bill now attempts to recover those who are making more than 100000 especially for seniors or married couples. So the easiest thing that we could do to get to get it across the, the finish line was to to do a phase in just like we did previously right. it is a three year phase in uh, first year's 35% so for your for your listeners uh, obviously if you're seeing you're making more than $100,000 the first year with this bill if it's enacted you would see a 35% tax reduction second year you're going to see a 65% tax deduction and then on the third year you would see 100% Elimination. So, what kind of hit does that take? Does that make to the to the revenue? To the revenue, all told, it's three hundred and seventy million after ten years, or fully implemented, I should say. So it's about thirty-seven million dollars a year. Phasing it in a little bit more softer. I know a lot of people are concerned about the personal income tax cuts that we've done. Some people are concerned that we're picking winners and losers, putting seniors over and above where we started at with personal income tax. I disagree. Any time that we can give tax relief to our citizens, it's a great deal for, or a great day for West Virginians. And always you're trying to do the most good for the most people. And when oh, you talk absolutely. about senior citizens in West Virginia, that's a large block. Oh yeah, you have about 50,000 retirees. And, and keep in mind, we're an outlier. I mean, there's 40 states right now that have repealed this tax. Right. Uh, our five bordering states have eliminated it. So we're an outlier right now. We need to follow suit. Now, it is AARP Day here at the Capitol, so I'm sure you'll be talking to Gaylene and other, yeah. and other advocates. Uh, what's, what's your relationship life as a legislator with, with, with AARP? Just talk a little bit about that uh, partnership. Uh, maybe a partnership's the wrong word, but you know where, what I'm getting at. I mean, they're, they're, they have a presence here, and they're always they making sure, holding you accountable yeah, yeah, and making sure that you're working absolutely. with them. And just like every other lobbyist group, remember, we're a group, we're a citizen legislature. In fact, my day job, I'm an estimator, a mechanical <laughs> estimator. So we can't stay in, informed upon every issue out there. So it's always good to have these stakeholders like AARP that will tell us, hey, these are issues that are important to our constituents, like our seniors. These are issues that are affecting seniors. So it's always great to have a working relationship. I've always enjoyed working with AARP over the last 14 years that I've been in the legis legislature. So it's just been a great working relationship. Well, Crossover Day will be here before you know it. So I know Gaylene will be on you guys making sure that this legislation uh, gets yeah. moving. So we'll see how it goes. You have to have all bills out of committee by Friday or Friday or Saturday. Yeah. So, yep. It'll so. be here before you know it. Boy, yeah. now time flies. It does. Well, Eric Householder, thank you for your time, sir. We want to thank all of our guests today, Delegate Eric Householder, Celebrity Chef Paul Smith joining us impromptu, and, of course, Gaylene Miller from AARP. 
and Evan Osborne from the Capital Market. And thank you for joining us on another episode of Outside the Echo Chamber. We'll be back on Thursday as we continue to discuss issues important to you and your family here from the 2024 legislative session. Until then, I'm Rick Lord. Take care.